Let's jump to coaches, okay? Coaches, that was just as busy, all right? So the coaches, man, this is a crazy, crazy world right now. And again, it's fun, it's challenging, but it's fun because it, you, you get to see the, the youth, you get to see the energy. And when I get to interview guys, I use interviews as ways to learn. So I like to bring in every, every phase. I like to go after different teams so I can learn as much as what's happening in the game as much as who I'm interviewing, who I want with our football team. So it's kind of a dual pattern for me. So I spend a lot of time at it because it's like learning football from how they do it versus how we do it and then still look for the t best teacher that I can find. So through that came out of this thing. So offensive coordinator, of course, we lost uh, our, our coordinator. And then about five days later, you know, you, you do some things in there that you've all heard about. And then, then they now instead of just taking one, they take two. And through all the BCS movement and all the the changing of the guard, I mean, it's totally changed even coaches now at this level, okay? At, particularly even our conference, if you watch our conference this year, in the last two weeks in this conference. So it's been crazy. But So I went out and uh, Luke Falk, okay? Luke Falk would be our offensive cor uh, coordinator and our quarterback coach. And what I'd say about him, how he lands here is – Multiple people I talked to, first thing I thought of was our quarterbacks. Second thing I thought of was our receivers. And I'm going, we've got talent in those positions. We've got a quarterbacks that throw generally more so than their 4-4-40. We've had those, but it's not like we get those every year. We consistently get the drop back quarterback that can throw because of the region that we're in. So looking at that for everything that's put together as much as currently what's on our football team, and we, can, we can't waste the opportunity of the receivers that we have and the quarterbacks that we have. And so we stayed down that path. So we ended up, as you know, Luke Falk comes from the Leach Tree, uh, Mike Leach Tree. So you'll hear air raid all the time. And, you know, you still got to go back and define air raid. But this is Mike Leach air raid. So this is not a regurgitation. This is the quarterback that played for him uh, through the whole system. So uh, that's, where, that's his background. And you guys have kind of followed up on that. When you go to Trey Tinsley, okay, there's a connection there. So Trey Tinsley was technically the backup quarterback for uh, Luke Falk. And so he was underneath the Mike Leach tree. And so they speak the same language. So they're coming in here that we've already got over the first hurdle that you've got those two speaking the same language. Then on top of that, what happened with Tinsley is he went down uh, when, uh, so they all got done at Washington State. So Tinsley goes with Mike Leach to, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi State, correct? So he goes right there, was his personal GA for three years down there. And then, unfortunately, when he passed, that's when Tinsley went out to USC to be with Lincoln Riley and Cliff Kingsbury, which is our air raid guys again. So, again, there's a whole family of that tree going on. And so by bringing him back in and using the things, because, again, I'm learning football uh, as much as I can from where I can, and he's bringing those things of, what he was in those rooms learning as much as the connection that he has with Luke. So that's how all that got tied together in the end. And then I'm jumping over to uh, Bryce Jones. Bryce Jones is, uh, oh man, he is, uh, I've just been around him three days now. And I tell you what, he is a diamond in the rough. He's, he is, everything I've been with him, he comes out of Penn State, as you know. Now originally, background on this one, He's already coached at St. Mary's out in North Dakota for a year, okay? So he's been in the Midwest coaching a position. After that, that's when he went to Penn State to get, and they're a great defense out there, and he was the assistant secondary coach there, okay, at Penn State. So he's done that for two years. And then so by going through the whole process and interviewed a lot of great candidates, uh, he, w he stood out because of his knowledge of the big picture as much as the, the technique and the teaching. And he, everything that I found out about him behind the scenes is uh, the, the, the techniques and the, and, the, and the detail he puts on the football field as far as practicing. So, yeah, he brings me some X and O's credentials of what we can bring to our room to enhance what we do. And he also brings what the primary thing was, and that's spending time with those players on the field, technique, because you've got new players sitting there, and that's, that's why he's here, okay? And then y'all had Carlton Littlejohn, I'm sure, on your sheet before. And what happened last night is, or yesterday afternoon, is he's a North Dakota State grad. He's a great man, and that's why I liked him. 
and uh, but North Dakota State uh, uh, took him back last night, and uh, he's going back there to be a, a position coach for them. So this thing is a moving part all the time, and and uh, so just gives me another opportunity to talk to more guys about football. So it's it's been good that way. And then you what what's not listed on there, you know we had uh, Riley Van Wy and uh, Brody Roja were on staff last year as volunteers. So then they have moved into their uh, full-time roles now. We all thought they were full-time last year, but they they did that whole thing uh, last year as technically volunteers coaching positions, and uh, they just moved into the full-time role after that. And then there's another one coming that, that, that'll be mentioned here hopefully before the end of the week. It's already leaked out there, but there's still HR things to do. But uh, uh, again, you got a, you got a secondary that needs uh, coaching, and uh, you got some young guys to do it. And I really believe we got the teachers to do it. Really excited about what they bring to our secondary. And then what, uh, of course, these, these two are hooked at the hip in uh, the throwing game. So now all I got to do is get Nelly to take care of the run game. And we'll see what comes out of this. So ask me about the staff. He's like, uh, what about when you sat down with Coach Falk? And I would imagine maybe I uh, had him get up on the whiteboard uh, really stuck out to you. I want to. Just, I, I listen for more than just past plays, and my interviews aren't just your normal stuff. Okay, I'm looking for other things and throwing questions out there that kept trying to bring the person out of what he's really going to be like in a room, and under stressful situations. And uh, what stood out to him was his detail, his uh, his teaching capability on the field. I don't look at the stats they had at the last place as much as I'm looking at what have they produced and what have they. Uh, uh, taught and what will they teach our guys to fit us and what stood about him the first thing that stood out was the guys that recommended him to me I'm just lucky enough I've been around lucky enough that I've got a lot of guys in the system that can really tell me who they're trying to develop and bring up to the next level and I want to be a part of that process because that's what I want for the players so he came uh, highly recommended that's why he's only been in coaching the one year but he's He's been in the system for a while now, and he he's the big picture. When I say the big picture, it is O-line technique to go with the tight end technique, to go with the receivers, to go with the timing of the route, because I've always felt I had the best quarterback in the country when I had Mario Verduzco. That goes way back before you guys. Mario, to me, is still today is the best teacher I've ever had of all my coaches as far as teaching a position. So I always... Uh, play back to his, what, what I heard him say and what, the way he taught stuff when I'm looking at the next quarterback coach. And that's what I heard, that rhythm of teaching and those words he was saying were similar to what I uh, recall when I had Mario. So it was kind of a comparison to my experience. And I heard that in the teaching on the field, the teaching in the classroom, okay, because that's a vision position, man. you got to unload that ball now in two seconds. And... I want the other thing I listened for was uh, I was thinking of Jackson Daly and I was thinking of uh, Kale. I was thinking of Aiden Dunn. I was thinking of what we have. What what fits them in their classroom? And I've got to fit them as much as they have to fit the system. And so I was looking for the guy to fit them. I felt he did that for all the reasons I just explained. But was it a play or something special? No. Was it air raid? I didn't even know he was air raid. I don't know what air raid is, okay? It sounds like we're going to throw the football. But we were throwing it before. It's production is what matters, not not these other things. But I tell you what, sitting there listening to him in a room, and I've had multiple times in the room, uh, they're on the same page, they're on the same wavelength, and the quicker they can teach it, the better we're going to be. And there's a there's a timetable on this too. I want to win now, not tomorrow. And anymore in this game in football, you be, it's a year-to-year -year business now. So you better win now, and uh, you want to develop guys, but those guys, that's kind of that's kind of a byproduct anymore, and it's too bad because that's what we're made of. But we have to be able to evolve with this system of what's going on in college football right now just like everybody, and that's why I'm excited for these two. I'll also tell you this, man. We've had some great coaches go through here, okay? And these, are, these guys are in the same makeup. I could go out and get the established ones forever, and I've done that. I've had a lot more success with those guys that, that – that got a, you know, they got they got goals, they got aspirations, and 
and they, they got they got energy. I mean, they got momentum, and all they need is some guidance of and some opportunities, like we all did one day. So, I mean, I look at I just saw Brandon Lynch. You guys don't remember Brandon Lynch just interviewed for the defensive coordinator job for the the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Lynch was here four years ago. Okay, you got when you watch that Super Bowl. That's Daniel Bullock as the defensive back coach for the 49ers. All right, this was his first job. All right, so you can go right down the list of the guys. That, Bill Inge, guys, Bill Inge just was going to Alabama. He was when he was on the sideline. Bill Inge in 2001 was probably my first hire. All right, and they wouldn't hire him at Iowa because he was an on-campus recruiting coordinator. I came up here. This was his first job, his first opportunity. He's made the most of it. He's in the uh, 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 championship game, and he's the linebacker coach of the year in the country. He's the co-defensive coordinator for the Washington Huskies. And he just is going to Alabama right now to be their linebacker coach. And this was his first job. Those are the kind of guys that I want for our players. And because I want that technique and that energy on the field, uh, and you guys know all the other ones that came through here, but when I talk about coaches, those are the ones they're looking for. And now when they leave here, guys, now they're jumping from, a, they used to leave here to go be position coaches. Now they're jumping to be coordinators in the BCS, which really tells you, the level that we play off and the respect we have coming out of here, what you are leaving here, that you go right to the Power Five or the or the BCS or whatever and, and can be successful even in a coordinator role. So pretty cool. But now I gotta refill the shoes and that's where we gotta do our work. You kinda touched on a little bit in that last answer, but you were already throwing the ball a lot. A lot of uh, people unfamiliar with the situation are acting like this is a massive departure. Coach Falk, I, it doesn't feel like a massive departure to what the offense is already doing. What's your take on just the overlap between what Coach Falk is going to do and what Coach Reader was doing? It's just words, man. It's, it's amazing. Everybody over overplay overthinks this stuff. It's it's more of a philosophy than it is a play. All right, and probably the hardest thing, honestly, when you change coaches sometimes is the terminology. They call the same play the same route. One guy calls it a sale, and the other guy calls it something else. All right? When you really get into the nuts and the bolts, I coach defense, so I watch more offense than they watch offense, for crying out loud. And I can draw the same plays that are running across the country for most teams somehow, some way. It's just the philosophy of when to call it, the anticipation of the call, and how to who's productive with it. All right? And that's the biggest difference in the game. It's... Heck, it's it's not as big as what people say, but it is a philosophy change. And I wouldn't say it's a change, you know, passing is passing, but it's more so probably the teaching of the progression, if you want to call that, of how to teach the quarterback in the classroom how to do it, okay? Kurt Warner was different than uh, uh, Eric Sanders. They both were successful. And so it's, it's, it's more so the philosophy and the talent, and I'll guarantee you, what I've noticed the difference in quarterbacks, every great quarterback that's been associated with you and I had a presence about himself. And he also had a great coach and a position coach because that one stands out because everybody's watching him. But he also needs a support cast. And he needs, he needs guys that will make the tough catches. He's need, he needs protection. But he also needs somebody to call the game with some anticipation to make the player successful. So that position coach and that – that room has to, will show up on the game day of how quickly that ball comes out or the decisions he makes under fire. So that's what, so yeah, is it a philosophy? It's a philosophy change. I wouldn't say it's a system change. Speaking of uh, Brace specifically, when you bring in a position coach on one side of the ball with a coordinator already established, uh, how much of that hire is you? How much do you bring in a Jeremiah into that? Part, ask that again, please. Uh, the, when hiring a Brace as the new corners coach, uh, how oh. much of that hire is you totally? How much of that hire is bringing in your coordinator to see how he would fit on that side of the ball? Well, I've, I've, that's the other misconception. I mean, let's go back to the philosophy. You're asking about defense. Yeah, <coughs> but in, in general, uh, if you're filling a position under a coordinator, how much does the coordinator have to say about that position coach? My quickest answer to that, just off the knee cuff, is is our defense is really always. I've always coordinated the defense, yeah. okay, with the help of and yeah. the assistance of. Now they've called the games. I've got guys ready to call the game and call their plan, 
but that's why it doesn't change. So our guys will be taught something similar to what last year and 10 years ago and two years ago were taught on the, in the secondary. We weren't in, we weren't as good as we should have been last year or could have been for whatever reason, okay? And uh, so we need to uh, go back to what do we need to do better? And also, when I look at defensive guys, I want them to bring something to us, something to myself. I want to learn, okay? You, if you're not learning, you're losing. And I want to learn. So when all through this thing, I actually like, to a degree, interviewing defensive guys because I'll bring some in just to learn, all right? And sometimes you bring a GA in even, he'll spill his whole system to you. Uh, and so you kind of learn what that guy that was really good at that I've been watching out there all the time, I want to know what he said in his meeting, the detail of the play and not just the play or the scheme. So that's what I'm looking for. But ultimately for the player, the number one thing I look for is that grass coach. I call him the grass coach. He's got to get on that field, be able to show him how to do it as much as tell him how to do it. That kid's got to believe in him, and I want that. I want a great mentor. I want somebody to get on the field and put his cleats on because that's a special position. The secondary is the quarterback. The quarterback's different. The secondary is different. And I want somebody that can put their cleats on and somebody that can mentor young men. And that's, I think, which is what I've seen. I'm really excited about he and even the one that's still coming in. Uh, for our secondary. Given the, um, the success that uh, Coach Hans, Coach Reeder had, and I should mention Coach Klam as well as a part of that mm -hmm. success, um, but the fact that Coach Reeder and uh, Coach Hans were both former quarterbacks, uh, OC quarterbacks coach, and then a wide receivers coach, did that at all have anything to do with the decision? Uh, I understand the connection with yep. Luke and Trey, but you got two former quarterbacks again, you know, coaching the offense, the quarterbacks, I, I do. Spots. I, that's a fair question, and it's a great question because that's what I probably learned by watching those two work together. When Joe got here, he was, that first year he was learning too because he was a tight end coach and he was trying to get his feet underneath him. But he really developed into a great coach, and uh, and it was and it was the connection that those two in a room that you could sit and listen to could talk. It's kind of like getting an ele elevator with uh, you know some people that don't speak our language. And you're not a part of the conversation because they're talking so fast and, and the terms they're using, they can think and visualize what they're saying. When I heard that, I just see it, it getting installed much more quicker to our players instead of fighting the battle of trying to teach the coach to coach the players. Those two are connected so we can skip over some of the learning phase and get to the players what they need to know in a shorter amount of time. And yes, yeah, so I like a quarterback coach and receivers as of this phase because of what I saw Joe do because he saw it through a quarterback's eyes and I kept hearing our players say that. So I listen to our players as much as I listen to what's going on day to day uh, as far as coaches that have done it. And Clam, man, Clam's a great coach, okay? Clam, man, he was a great connection with our players. Why do you think they're being successful at Iowa State right now? Probably more so in the run game than maybe years past. I'm sure it's not all Clam, but uh, he has a factor, okay? But he could put his cleats on and play with those guys as much as he could uh, uh, recruit. So that's cool. To me, that's good stuff. What we're doing here, people are watching because they're taking these guys to the Power Five or to the NFL. Blue Adams is a, is a defensive back coach for uh, Michigan State. He went from here. I took him there because this was his first job. And he went from here to the Miami Dolphins. And then he's gone through the whole system, and he was part of the Oregon State staff to go to Michigan State. I just got a chance to call all these guys now because I was looking for DVAC coaches, and I was uh, Pat McCann, the offensive coordinator for Fresno State. I just had a long conversation with him about two weeks ago, all right? Trust me, don't think he knows these guys, all right, coming out of the West Coast. So fortunately, I got some guys I can call just to make sure I'm hearing what I'm seeing and I'm right. It kind of gives you confidence that uh, you're going in the right direction. So, But we still got to produce. That's the fun part.